Good morning, everybody. Welcome. A couple of technical difficulties, so sorry about that. If you're over on Facebook, just didn't have the stream set up correctly. Hope you're all doing well. If you're joining me for the very first time, my name's Rod. I'm the founder of the Learn to Paint Academy. And um, this is our Friday morning coffee chat and Q&A. So I hope you got your coffee with you. This is your opportunity to ask any questions at all about learning to paint um, or art in general or the Learn to Paint Academy or the business side of art. And uh, where possible, I shall endeavor to answer them for you, your questions. Can't answer everything, but I'll certainly do my very best to help you out where we can. Um, so let us see where everyone is this morning. Good morning, Becky in Oklahoma, welcome. And uh, oh, let me test this out for those of you who are in the members area. Should be getting some hearts on the screen. Let me know if that worked. Um, yeah, g'day, Becky in Barmy, Oklahoma, and Gary in Walla Badar, Tatiana in Southern Florida, welcome. Good morning, Sajada in Nevada. Morning, Peter in New Zealand, welcome. And Manju, Ontario, Canada, welcome. Terry, good morning, Terry in Las Vegas. Terry says, your ears must have been burning yesterday. Sujata and I got together for coffee in Las Vegas and we were singing your praises. Oh, that's lovely, thank you very much. Hope you had a good time. Morning, Janet in Fort Wayne and Sherlyn in Louisiana, welcome. Marie, New Hampshire, looking forward to an hour of helpful hints and ideas. Me too, me too. Morning, Margaret in Gosford. Morning, Beverly. Dryden, Ontario. Morning, Gail. Cold and wet in Geelong. Ugh, so glad I don't have to do winters in Geelong anymore. But I hope you're well. And Gail in Georgia, welcome. Good morning, Sonia in Melbourne, welcome. Shelley in Yorkshire, love Yorkshire. And York in the UK. Sonia, welcome. Shez in Mathara, hope you're doing well. Morning, Sandy in Ontario. Feeling more like fall than the beginning of summer. Well, my fingers are crossed that summer will come and bless you soon, Sandy. G'day, Robert in Ireland. G'day, Magdalene in Tassie. Um, da -da -da. Morning, Sonia in Melbourne. Yes, lots of hearts. Excellent. New little feature they've added. Uh, Beverly said, took inventory and numbered my paintings, took pictures. Wow, what a learning experience done and looking forward to it. Good on you, Beverly. Beverly is talking about uh, she's going through our Artist Business Academy. Um, and that's one of our exercises is to start getting our inventory together. Janet says, lots of hearts. Good-o. Wanda loves the hearts. <laughs> you got to have some hearts occasionally. Sonia says, congrats on the uh, Blue Thumb sale. Rod, awesome. Thank you, uh, Sonia. Yeah, I'll, look, I might talk about that briefly. Um, I've got another sale today, which another surprising sale. So we'll talk about that briefly. Um, Manju said, look like a bouquet of hearts. Hey, Batcha in South Florida. Morning, Merrill. Meriden, cold. I just heard something about hearts. Oh, um, well, only if you're on the uh, members area chat there. There's some hearts and there's some confetti for you. <laughs> it's a new feature they've added in. Um, you have to be looking at the time it goes. Gary says, are you doing a section on the dispatch side of things or should we just cost and research that ourselves? Uh, good, good question, Gary. We will add that into ABA. Um, so we'll, uh, it's going to be different for everybody in the world. So we'll do a sort of generic guide, I guess. Morning, Colin in Dapto, out of the Victorian red zone soon. Yes. Sonia says, more hearts and confetti. Um, just saw some heart. Okay, cool. That's working. And over on Facebook, good morning, everyone. Morning, Yvonne. Morning, Darlene. Hot and humid in Alabama. Beautiful. Hope you're feeling better. Yeah, I am feeling better. Thanks, Darlene. Pauline says, hi, I loved your palette knife seascape recently posted. Any chance of doing something similar on a live stream? Uh, Pauline, we will be doing something similar. Um, what I will be doing is that style of palette knife and the seascapes is uh, something I learned from my mentor, Brian Cook. And um, I'm about to record four painting projects, um, the last four painting projects that Brian ever created. Um, he and I were working on, you know, him coming up here and I was going to film him and 
and so but he passed away before we could do the filming. But I've got the projects. I'm going to record the projects. So if you're a member of the Learn to Paint Academy, um, that will be added into your um, back office um, sometime in July, probably towards the end of July, I'd say, with everything else we've got going on. So, uh, yeah, we'll definitely be doing that. Um, also, on our advanced live streams, one of the things I want to start doing is taking some of um, old master paintings and seeing if we can recreate our own version of them just as a, a learning experience. So that'll be on our advanced. Morning Sandy in North Dakota. Morning Anne in Perth. Freezing in Perth. Wow, we don't hear that very often. Morning Serena. Cold in Greenmount. Morning Mary, how are you? G'day Tanya in Canberra. Hey Linda in Dublin Island, welcome. Nana Marge. We'll watch later. I'm off to golf. It's four degrees. Goodness me. That's keen golfer right there. <laughs> Morning, Jenny on the Gold Coast. Morning, Tracy in Nelson Bay. Welcome. Morning, Barb in BC, Canada. And Catherine in Michigan. Welcome. Good morning, Julie. How are you? Good morning, Chrissy. Wooling, Wooling Bar, New South Wales. Good to see you all. Okay. Um... Uh, yes, so I'll talk about briefly about the blue thumb. Um, I sold a painting on blue thumb, which is not that unusual. Um, but here's an interesting thing about it, right? It's, uh, it's a painting that I did three years ago, four years ago, and it was a demonstration painting, and I can't remember which, as part of the Learn to Paint Academy, it was a, a larger one of Glasshouse Mountains. And... Um, you know, it, you just never can tell when a painting is going to find the right buyer. And, you know, I, I really thought it was an okay painting and that one day it might sell. But I'd, I've done a lot of work since then, which I thought is quite, you know, better, a lot better. That I'm thinking as I do them, oh, this one's definitely going to sell, right? And then they sit around and don't sell. And then ones that you just completely don't expect sold. So uh, I sold one today on eBay, only, only cheaply. Um, but it's one that I did five years ago. I did a video on YouTube and um, five or yeah, maybe even, yeah, five years ago. And, uh, and that sold this morning on eBay. So it's like, you know, I, you just can't tell. If you're trying to sell your artwork, the key is the more paintings you've got out on the internet, right, on different websites and online galleries, that have a buy button next to them, the more sales you make, right? And this has been the one thing that I, you know, because the Learn to Paint Academy has grown so much, the amount of time I've got for my own painting and, and selling um, has been shrinking over the last 18 months or so, which um, I'm addressing that. But uh, it's the, the one thing that's held me back from selling a lot more paintings is I just haven't been putting enough paintings up. I've probably got 30 or 40 paintings here in the studio that could easily be listed and probably sell at some point if I just get them up online, right? So there's a little hint for anyone who's interested in selling. Um, the more of them you've got up online, the better. And the thing I've noticed about anyone who's doing really well selling online is they're prolific, right? Pretty much every day they're listing a new painting um, online. That's how they get noticed. So anyway, just on, off on a tangent there. G'day Gary, the largest Petri dish in Australia, Sydney. Yeah, good luck with that. Crazy times. Morning, Manuel. Ma no, Manuela, I think it is, in Cambridge. Welcome. Morning, Serena. Um, Barb says she needs to... Uh, Serena says Barb needs to show us a picture of your painting on her wall. Well, she actually posted it in the members area of the Learn to Paint Academy on the activity stream. And Barb, if you're there, um, with your permission, I'll post it up on our Facebook page as well, if that's okay with you. Uh, let us know in the chat. G'day, Teresa. In Nova Scotia, um, 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 King Kinney, welcome. And do, 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 do. Um, Janet said, so much to do and so little time to do all the great lessons and projects. Yes, that's my problem in life, Janet. I don't know how anybody can get bored. Um, I've just got so many things I want to do. It's, uh, you know, I don't know where to start. Well, actually, I do know where to start. I used to have it all in my head. And over the last probably month to two months, I've been really focused on personal productivity and using a, uh, different tools to be able to organize my time and become more productive and it's working quite well. So um, 
I'll do a little video on that in the Artist Business Academy. But you're right, there is so much to do. Morning Foxy, Pete Colson, one in uh, Paddy Superior, welcome. Oh, good evening from Paddy in Superior. <laughs> My apologies. Good evening, Paddy. Uh, Sonia said, you need an assistant to list your paintings. Now, good, good, good point there, Sonia. I'm actually working on that right now. I've got uh, a number of virtual assistants, so I've, I'm starting to get them trained up to do different tasks. And one of, my, one of them I'm going to get to dedicate just to my paintings, maintaining my stock list and then listing them across a whole range of uh, different websites. So yes, absolutely. Um, I don't recommend starting there, but I think that's a, if you want to be a selling artist, that's definitely a goal to work towards in, in the future. Uh, Gary says, do you use templates to upload to eBay? I just started fiddling with it. Do, do you know if it's possible to do all the listings and then... Uh, listing work then go live at one time with the whole lot. I think you can do that with a shop, but we are not doing a shop. Um, Gary, I, I think there is a way to do it, but I don't know how. But what you can do, and, and I actually put this into the, uh, I mentioned this in the video training in the Artist Business Academy on eBay. Um, you can set up a standard template and then you can use that for each listing. And so what that means is when you log into your account, you can basically, you with your mobile phone, take a photo of your painting, you can edit it on your phone, and then you can go to the eBay app, call up that template, and all you do is just upload the photos into it and change the title and a, and a couple of little details. Um, and that will make it far more efficient. So yes, you can definitely do that. Um, doing them all in bulk, not sure. There is, there is a way to do it, but I'm not sure how to do it. Um, so I'll, I'll see if I can find out. Sajada says, can I ask you how much time do you or a good artist like you spend on an average on one painting? My th husband thinks I spend too little time on each painting. Uh, Sajada, I think when, when you are starting out, um, I wouldn't spend too much time per painting, right? Um, because 80% of, of the success of your painting, I think, is going to come in really step one, step two, and a bit of step three of the more method of painting, right? When we start spending a lot of time, it's because we're trying to fix mistakes. But if we get the fundamentals correct, the right composition and design, the right values, and then we start laying the right colors over it, um, that process doesn't take too much time. It's the, really the finessing in the details is what takes time. So, um, and it depends on what your goals and strategy are, okay? Um, so if you're following the ABA where we're going to do higher volume, lower dollar value, I think you want to try and get it down to about an hour-ish per painting. A little 8 by 10 painting shouldn't take you more than an hour. If you're trying to get your work into art shows and galleries and more expensive work, then yeah, maybe you're taking two to three hours. But every single artist is different, right? The one thing I've noticed is that it's difficult to make a living as an artist and I know we're talking a lot about business, so if anyone's got questions about more general art stuff, I'm happy to talk about that as well. But it's difficult to make a living as an artist where you invest too much time in each piece of work, right? Um, there are some artists who can only produce about 20 paintings a year, and uh, it's because they invest so much time and energy into each painting, right? What that means, to make a living, they've got to sell those paintings for $20,000 plus, right? Because generally that's going to be in a gallery. Gallery takes half. Um, Etc. Right. So, um, so let's say it's ten thousand dollars plus. If you can only produce twenty paintings a year, and uh, what happens if they don't sell? Right. Then the, your income more greatly impacted. Whereas a lower dollar, higher volume strategy, <coughs> you get more practice. You don't get caught up on any one painting, um, and I think you can you can get to an income level a lot quicker with that approach. Um, but, you know, you've got to find your own groove with it. That's the real key. You go and follow, uh, like, I, you know, I mentioned Blue Thumb a lot, it's where I follow a lot of artists. Um, the ones who are killing it on there, like doing really well, they're the ones who, who are listing pretty much every day, a painting or two. Okay. Shelley said, I think the painting sold on eBay today and that you're talking about was brought by me. Oh, good on you, Shelley. I was listing my paintings on eBay as instructed and stumbled across it. Very exciting. Oh, that's fantastic, Shelley. Um, I've, I've got it here and I'm going to package it up over the weekend with Manju's painting and, and the other one. Um, and I think you're in the UK. So, you know, expect it in about three to four weeks <laughs> with the COVID. But we'll get it out to you. So thank you for that. And that paint, painting, I don't know if you're aware, but that was the, uh, a demo painting from um, 
a video I did about five years ago on, on uh, YouTube. In fact, I'm going to find the video. It was a very early one, right? Um, and uh, it's had 300,000 views, I think. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm. I'm to paint in a I'll post the link in for you. Might be interesting for someone. Um, it's going back away. There we are. Oh, shit. Oh, pardon me for swearing. It's had 492,000 views now. Smart people. Um, so this is my one video that went viral. <laughs> Let me post it in here for you. Look in the, uh, in the, there's a few hearts for you over there. And um, have a look for this link. Don't, don't go off and watch it now because otherwise you'll leave me here on my own. But have a look, uh, have a look later on. Um, so yeah, good on your show. That's, that's the actual video of me creating that painting. It's an oldie, but it's a goodie. All right, where are we up to? Uh, Red Joker, good morning in Toronto. Good morning, Donna in Cairns, welcome. Sonia said, I have enlisted hubby to photograph and put my paintings in a spreadsheet. He was better at photography than me. Fantastic. I highly recommend engaging as many other people to assist you as you can if you're trying to sell your artwork, definitely. Magdalene says, Rod, believe it or not, that was the painting on eBay that I was going to buy, but wanted to ask you first about seeing no signature on it, and it got sold overnight. Ah, oh, sorry, Magdalene. Um, I can pop a signature on it. That's no problem. Um, but that one sold, yeah. Oh, and uh, also this one sold as well. Um, Sonia uh, bought that one, so thank you, Sonia. Um, 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 obviously, that'll be a few weeks before that gets shipped out. Morning, Carleen. Shelley, thank you, Rod. Could you please sign it? Yes, I'll, I'll sign it for you. Uh, Sajada says, thanks, Rod. Clarifying the time aspect, my pleasure. Gary says, have you any experience with art fairs? It seems like the artist takes all the financial risk and the dealer takes 35% of any profit. Yeah, Gary, I wouldn't be going into an art fair, um, you know, like the ones at Saatchi and that do the big ones, um, unless you've got paintings that are worth $3,000 or more. Um, it's just not even worth considering. Um, you know, art's... In that type of environment, art is highly competitive, and the artists that do the best, I know a couple of artists who do really well in art fairs, but the ones who do the best do their own marketing to get people to come specifically to their stand, and you're talking big bucks to go into that type of thing. Um, so when you're hitting that two and a half, three thousand dollar plus range, that's when I'd start looking at that type of thing. But I still wouldn't even do it, just from a time perspective, unless you love chatting to people face to face. Um, which I'm not particularly good at. Um, yeah. Shelley said, I, uh, I, look, the, the one thing I should, I'll just point out is that the art world has lots of people who create things like art fairs and art shows and um, things like that, where the artist spends a lot of money with no guarantees of any return at all, right? There's a, there's an, a gallery in New York that, um, at some point when you start to get social media exposure for your artwork, you'll get approached by them, right? And their whole thing is, you know, be represented by a New York gallery. Well, the truth of the matter is it'll cost you about 10 grand to send your paintings over there and to be in their gallery for a period of time. And chances are good you won't sell anything, right? You're much better off to um, invest time, energy, and money into building an audience that you own in control and, um, and you know, try and avoid paying for exposure in the art world, put it that way. Um, now, there are times and places, right? So I'm talking with um, a couple of artist mates and we're looking at putting on our own little exhibition um, for a number of different reasons um, and we'll invest money into that, but I'll do the marketing and we'll build the audience and we'll own the audience, right? Um, so that sometimes it is worth spending money, but not, not always, you've got to be really careful. Anytime somebody tries to sell you exposure, you know, then um, that's an alarm bell. Because what you, you don't want exposure. If you're gonna if you're gonna invest money, you want sales, right? Gail said, "Love the fog painting. Was working, so did not get a chance to watch." Well, the recording is available, Gail. So we're finishing it off next week. Gary says, yes, Marbella is 1K euro. I'm not sure what you mean there, Gary. 
Meryl said, I haven't finished my foggy one yet. He's, no, it's not finished. We're finishing it off next week, Meryl. Um, Jenny says, Hi, hello, Ryder. Beginning question, can you mix a flow and a structured paint colour together? I bought both before. I, yeah, you can, absolutely, Jenny. Um, a, a flow paint, in particular, you're talking about acrylics, really. Um, a structured paint is just higher viscosity and a flow paint is uh, more fluid, right? So how do you make a high viscosity paint more fluid? You add a medium to it. So that's basically, yeah. So no problem at all mixing those together. Terry said, shipping costs are killing me. I sold two small paintings for $25 each, but the shipping. So first of all, congratulations, Terry, for selling two paintings. Uh, second of all, you need to add the, sh the shipping costs on top of, right? Don't, in don't incorporate that into your sales price. It's $25 plus shipping, right? So um, if you're in the States, what I'd be doing is I'd be focusing just on, on US. Don't ship outside the US until you get a handle on shipping costs and so on. And then work out your cost for shipping for the different zones, right? And it's not just the postage, it's also the packaging. So you need to allow a couple of dollars in there for um, bubble wrap and tape and stuff like that, right? So you, the shipping should never cost you money. It should always be paid by the, um, by the purchaser, right? Debbie said, I find that hard to believe you don't like talking to people. Now, I'm very much an introvert, Debbie, and uh, I, you know, quite in, I, I've got used to doing this, um, but put me in front of actual people, real life breathing people, <laughs> I, um, yeah, struggle. My wife's a people person, so I sort of, we go to parties and I, I'll be hovering around next to her. Now, if I get chatting to somebody, I can be quite chatty, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm actually an introvert. Uh, G'day Gail, good question Jenny, I always mix those two together. Yeah, that's no problem. Um, shipping two small paintings to Africa will cost $119. Well, yeah, to Africa, right? So this is what I'm saying, I'd contain it. If you're just starting out selling your paintings, right? Contain it to your local country initially um, until you get a handle on how to ship and sell and, sell and, and all that sort of stuff and what the costs are. Um, I got caught actually, I sold a big one off my website to the US just as the pandemic kicked in and courier costs went through the roof. It cost me $300 to send it, right? And um, I think I only charged 70 or $80. So I just wore that cost because it was my mistake and, and so on. Um, so yeah. Magdalene said, Rod, did you end up having a flash sale or did I miss it? Rather broke now after selling it for ABA and new materials, so I really can't afford your expensive paintings at this stage. Um, Magdalene, I, I don't think, I, I haven't had a flash sale for a while. Um, if you want to buy one of my paintings, then there's a few on eBay still at good prices. Just look, search for me there. Um, but then the other ones we're selling is, I'm selling these demos um, for 150 just contact our, um, our support desk, but that particular one's sold. Um, Oh, 1,000 euro to show three paintings at the Marbella Spain Art Fair. Well, Gary, that's only the start of the cost because you've got to get them there right? and get them back when they don't sell. So, yeah, I wouldn't be doing that in a heart, uh, anytime soon, right? Um, Leanne said, question on cool and warm colours. You often mention if we don't have the colour mentioned in a particular brand, you mention to buy a cool or a warm. How do you tell if a particular brand's colour is cool or warm version? Well... Um, it's a good question. I think just through um, knowledge, you know, just over time, um, you know, ultramarine blue has red in it, so it's warmer than, say, a cobalt blue, which is more of a neutral blue. So in blue, you'd have ultramarine blue as your warm, cobalt blue is your cooler colour, right? In in alizarin, oh, sorry, in red, a cadmium red is going to be warmer than an alizarin. And if you just use your own intuition, if you paint out a square of cadmium red and a square of um, alizarin, and just ask yourself which feels warmer to you, right? Then th that's probably the easiest way to tell. Um, yellow ochre is probably warmer than a cadmium yellow light, um, so because it has red in it as well. Um, yeah, I, I think you, you only need to know three of them, right? Um, but that's what I'd be looking at. And, and probably the easiest way is to... Um, is to just paint squares out and then just look at them and go, which one of those feels warmer to me, yeah? Okay. 
Okie dokie. My Facebook's frozen, so I apologise to Facebook people. Let me see if I can recover it here. Um, uh, Bob says, feel free to post the photo she put up. Um, I'll do that later on today. All of her contacts really love the painting. Oh, that's great, Bob. So happy to hear that. Uh, um, 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 G'day Barbara in Mordings Peninsula. King Kinney sold three paintings. Well done, King Kinney. Um, <coughs> seems to be struggling on Facebook. Let me, here we go. Uh, Gay Linda in uh, Canada. Sally, first time in a while from New Zealand. Welcome, Sally. My video link keeps stopping today. Yeah, I don't. It seems to be playing up on you on Facebook. Jeanette said, "Could not watch the fog painting, but are painting while I'm watching this." Good on you, Jeanette. Kathy said, "Received my water mixed oils this week. On instructions, it says to let dry six months." to a year before varnishing. Do you wait that long? No, that's, um, no. So water mixable oils and traditional oils have a two-stage drying process, right? Um, the first stage is when the, <coughs> pardon me, the thinning medium dries out. So if you're just mixing it down with water, when the water dries out, it'll then start to get a, a coat, like a skin over it, um, and it becomes what we call touch dry. <coughs> And that, that takes two to six days, two to seven days. So as soon as it's touch dry, um, then I would, I varnish it, you know. But I'm, I'm waiting about two to three weeks before I package it and ship it. Um, the six months is where is really when it cures, the, um, the paint cures, and it, it cures through a process of oxidation, right? So they're just being overly cautious. Um, yeah, so at the moment, like this one here, when I finish it next week, I'll wait two weeks um, now, if you, you, if you use a lot of white, it'll probably take a little bit longer to dry. Teresa said, speaking of time, the cow picture broke my time bank, but you're so right, it was because I was trying to put in details. The fog painting is also a challenge. In fact, the more I know, the more I realise how much I still need to know, but I'm determined. Well, I, same experience here, Teresa. The more I learn, the more I realise it's an expansive body of knowledge. And then yesterday I went to the European Masters and um, saw paintings from 1440, and they were doing pretty seriously good work then, and it made me realise I know nothing, you know, like when you look at the great masters of history. So, yeah, it's a journey. It's a journey, and you just keep plugging away. Morning, Winnie. My pleasure, Kathy. <coughs> I don't know what they're doing over at Facebook land, but um, hopefully they'll, it'll get sorted out soon. Um... Um, Sonia says to check Australia Post for international prepaid satchels. Yes, that's one good idea. You're going to have to keep them fairly small for that to work. Um, but I would still put MDF board on both sides just to be safe. Gary said you'll notice when you do Instagram, you get constantly hit by direct messages to your painting to someone and pay them to list it. Yeah, you do get that all the time. And I just completely ignore those. Can you put Australia only when selling? Uh, you can, Carleen. You can specify that in eBay. Um, and you can say where you're happy to ship to, and you can say you'll only ship to Australia if you want to. Yeah, absolutely. She says uh, she's found that a lot of artists are introverts. I think that's very true. Um, found that Australia Post, on average, is around $14. Um, yeah, it depends on where you're shipping to. If you're shipping from the east coast of Australia to WA, it, it, there's a bit of a jump up. Um, if you're shipping to the East Coast, then yeah, around $14 possibly. Um, I think I set my standard at $14.90, so yeah. Carolyn said, you can buy ultramarine blue in the green side in Liquitex. Yeah, you probably can. Um, so you can give that a try. Gary said, eBay marketing recommends that you include shipping in your price and sell ready to hang which is against what we're saying. We're trying to keep the offer price low 
um, the adding stuff on. Yeah, I mean, eBay will make certain recommendations. And um, look, there's no absolute right or wrong. You have to. The first thing I'd ask is why would eBay recommend that, right? They've got a particular reason for recommending that because um, maybe it reduces their customer support. Who knows? It could be any number of reasons behind why they recommend that. Um, my, my suggestion is try everything over the next six months, two years, try it all different ways and see what works best for you, right? Um, I have never had a problem adding shipping to it. If somebody wants the painting, um, most people, I mean, if, if you buy anything online through an e-commerce store, it's nearly always plus shipping. So, you know, I, I don't think we have a problem with it at all, um, doing it that way. Um, Leanne says, where I find it hard is when the store has so many different blues, not ultramarine or the ones I'm familiar with, and then can't decide which ones by... They, no, they're, they're definitely not labelled warm or cool, that's for sure. Um, I can't believe that they wouldn't have ultramarine blue, though, unless they've sold out. If you're having problems, then just, I mean... It depends on what you want to paint. If you want to paint landscapes and seascapes, just follow the standard palette that I recommend in the uh, colour mixing course, right? The, um, the expanded palette, where you've got a warm and a cool of each colour, okay? So I listed all that for you in the colour mixing course. Just shop for those. And if you can't find it in the store, then one of the online um, art supply stores will have it for sure. Hey, Anne, thanks for coming across here. Gary said the fog painting was really difficult with Artilia. I had to, I had to. Well, with with any with any acrylics where you have to keep the paint soft and pliable, you're going to have problems with this style of painting for sure. Um, and that's why I recommend everybody who's painting with acrylics right now give water mix boils a try. Right? Just at least give it a, a try because. It does have many advantages, but also retains a lot of the advantages of acrylics, right? Being that you can mix it down with water. Um, you know, scenes like this require softness and finesse, which oils is best suited to. No question about that. All right, where are we up to here? Uh, Linda says, if someone wants to buy one of my paintings that I have done in one of your classes or challenges, is it okay to sell it even though it was from a demo? Yes, absolutely, Linda. In fact, um, if you go to our support page, um, you will see our statement regarding copyright. Um, so I'm just going to pull up the page and I'll copy it in for everyone. It's right down the bottom. Right? Um, so you can, um, so the copyright's down the bottom of the support page, you can sell any of the paintings that you do from one of the instructions in the Learn to Paint Academy or a challenge, right? What you can't do is go to my Rodmore Art website or the Rodmore Art Facebook page where I post up my own personal work and um, copy the paintings there and sell those. Um, so if, if it hasn't appeared in Learn to Paint Academy in some format, then don't copy it. But if it has, then you're free to copy it and sell it. Okay. There's some confetti for you all. <coughs> um, wow, you, that's good of them. Uh, Terry's saying she's got a buyer in Africa who's willing to pay the shipping costs to, uh, to Africa. So that's handy. But a lesson learnt, right? And along the way, we learn lots of lessons. So, <clears throat> can, can you say in oils, what's the medium you use to dip the brush in instead of water? Well, it depends. There's, there's no one medium. Um, so with oil paint, Sometimes you use a medium to reduce the viscosity of the paint. So if you're using traditional oils, um, I would use something like a gum turpentine 
or you know, some sort of solvent um, to reduce the viscosity. Um, but, you, but that's not good for your health, right? Which is why I stopped doing it. If you're using water mixable oils, then I would use a little bit of water to thin the paint down. But in the latter stages of the painting, you need some sort of oil-based medium um, with oil paints um, for reasons I won't get into now, but you need to progressively start using more oil into it um, as you layer oil paints up, especially if you're letting it dry in between layers. So um, you're going to need some sort of medium that is an oil-based medium for that. And that includes water mixable oils as well. You would need that. Okay. <clears throat> oh, okay, I'll get it, Leanne. Um, Leanne, it sounds, it sounds like you're in Australia. Um, so just go to artshedonline.com and you'll be able to get everything you need there um, in H2Os, no problem, I would think. Shelly said, so when I joined L2PA a few months ago, I only used acrylic. After trying water mixable oils, following your advice, I now love them. They do take a few paintings to get used to. They do, absolutely. You know, probably take you 20 paintings to get a feel for them. Um, and go through our water mixable oils introduction course. That'll help speed you along a little bit. Absolutely. And said, any suggestions on promoting and selling a series or collection of 10 paintings? Can be sold separately, but a, a part of a set, if that makes sense. Um, well, I mean, if you're going to sell them separately, then... You know, let's say you're going to use eBay as the marketplace. It's not the only marketplace, but because we've been talking about it, then you'd have 10 separate listings, right, for it in eBay. But what you do is you give it a name. You give the series a name, and, and you, you like doing your uh, emus. So, um, you know, you could call it Eddie Emus Outback Series, right? And on each of the listings, you put that as a big headline. On, in the listing description so that people can see the connection between them, right? Um, they should be able to see that in the paintings themselves. If it's a genuine series of work, a body of work that goes together, then they should be able to see that anyway. But um, that's probably the only real way you can do that. Now, having said that, when you've got your own website, I'll show you something that I've been working on, but again, time, time robs me of good intentions way too often. Um, so I've been working on this. This is not, you can't publicly access this currently on my website. Um, but each of the paintings are already, you, you can go and find each of the paintings. I'll pop this into the chat as well. You can go and find each of these paintings, but as a collection, um, they're not publicly available. And what I'm working on is this page, which I'm putting in here. So this is a sneak peek, right? Feel free to buy any of these now if you want. Um, but I'm going to have a page where I've got this little series, a body of work together. Um, and you know, I'm going to get 20 or 30 there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to promote that as a virtual exhibition on my website, right? And send people just to this page. Now, again, you can find any of those paintings by going through the main website. They're all there. But listed together as a collection where, they're, where there's a... Um, a commonality between them, right, um, makes sense. But you need your own website to do that, which we'll, we'll eventually get to in the ABA. But um, yeah, I'm just showing you one, one way of approaching series. Now, as you advance and develop and, and start to get into a rhythm with selling artwork, um, then what I recommend is that you do three series a year and you release them as an exhibition, a virtual online exhibition, or if you can get them into an actual exhibition, that's even, that's good as well. But three major online exhibitions of different series, right? And then you can do a whole lot of promotion around that. You can do PR. Um, but this works better when you've got your own audience. So we're sort of putting the cart ahead of the horse at the moment, which we don't want to do. We want to build things logically and systematically step by step, right? But that's an example of how you might put together a series and, and um, promote that. Alrighty. Um, <coughs> just coming back here, Linda says, have purchased WMO. We'll be taking your WMO intro course. Good on you, Linda. Wondering, when using an MDF board to put any paints on to use as my palette, do I need to treat the MDF board at all? 
um, know you have to prime both sides when using it to paint on. Yeah, so to use it as a palette, I um, I don't prepare the board at all. You know, it's just a sheet of MDF board. And what will happen is the first 10, 15, 20 times that you paint, it's going to feel a little bit gritty, right? But just persist with it. Uh, because over time, it'll start to get this nice film over it, this nice coating over it, and then it's good to go from there, right? So just know that initially it'll feel a little bit weird, a bit gritty. I don't know how to describe it, but um, stick with it. So I don't do anything to prepare it. Uh, G'day, Gail. Gail says, you mentioned needing a special oil medium even for water mixed boils. What would that be? Well, um, there's different types. So hang on a sec, and I'll hobble out here. Um, 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 um. So this gets into the fat over lean um, painting approach, which is sort of getting into the territory of traditional oils. Um, but you know, this is one I use, which is a Cobra, and this is a quick drying medium. So it's, it's an oil based medium. You can see the oil in it there, right? And so you don't use that initially for your block in, you keep your paint thin, thin it down with water, um, but you use this as you layer paint up, right? In the painting, that you'd use that. Oh, that's another quick dry. So that, I've got two quick drying ones here. Um, there's another one which is a slow drying medium. Same thing, it just dries a little bit slower. <laughs> Funny that. Um, and yeah, that'd be the two main ones that I'd use. You could use just a linseed oil um, for it, you know, if you're using traditional oils. G'day, Rosalie, how are you? Um, where are we up to here, 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 here? Yes, I am, yeah, Patty, which I, I don't want to get into a description about that now because it might confuse us and I think it needs more of a, um, a focused discussion around that. Uh, well, I'd use water initially to thin it down for our blocking, but then beyond that, I'd start using um, the mediums that I showed. However, I hardly ever use mediums, to be honest. Um, I really only just use water. I occasionally use this quick dry medium, but the main reason why I use it is it gives it a nice glossy finish. So that's the main reason why I use it. Um, thanks, Sonia. Appreciate that. Callum said, your link on your paintings don't have the size of the canvas there. You mean that display there? Well, if you click on That's just the overview, right? If you click on the one you like, you actually open up the page of the painting where you can buy it. And it should have the, the size should be on that there. Okay, so you just need to click on one of the paintings there, Kelly. <coughs> um, Teresa said, that's a great idea. I thought about painting our many cows in here, I think it is, and a series would be awesome. Keeping in mind it won't happen until my school level improves, but I can see a market. Absolutely, cow, cow paintings when done well, very popular. And if you've got cows around you, then um, yeah, I wouldn't wait until your skills improve. Start painting them now, right? And then you can call some of them your early works, right? Collectibles, um, and then you just get better from there. So yeah, start today, yeah, absolutely. Um, don't wait, like in art, I don't think you ever wanna wait until you think you've arrived at a certain level or a skill, because it never happens, right? Because when you, the problem is our current expectations and our current ability, right? There's always a gap. We'd love to be doing paintings up here, but we're currently here. But as our skills improve, our expectations do also, right? So we're always sort of chasing that elusive skill set or ability, if you know what I mean. So don't, don't have a wait with anything in art. Just do what you want to do and get started and go after it, yeah? Uh, Meryl said, do you still keep using water when using the cobra mediums or do you uh, have to start using terps? Uh, no, well, the, these are mediums that are water mixable. So they're designed for water mixable paints. Don't use standard oil painting mediums because then you will lose the, uh, the benefit of water mixable oils, right? So you need to buy specific mediums designed for um, water mixable oils. And um, 
So the Cobra has, has a range of mediums for their water explorers. So does the <coughs> Windsor & Newton Artisan. Um, they have a range of mediums as well um, that you could use. All right. Any other questions, friends? Let us know. What other questions do you have? <coughs> Very good, Meryl. Pretty sure Jackson's art and drawing supplies will have them because um, when we were talking about <coughs> Pardon me. We we're talking about um, doing uh, uh, workshops over there. That was what we we're going to do: was water mixed oil. So they should have them in stock there. Colin said, "Rod, I found the discussion on time spent painting pertinent. I've been dabbling in portraiture, successfully applying the more method plus glazing, but portraits are very time-consuming." Yes, they are. Yeah, totally. Um, thanks, Rod, for the versatility of your methodology. Well, you know, if you're going to, if you if you want to become an income earning artist doing portraits, then you really have, the only way to do that really, I think, is commissions, um, and charging, you know, large amounts of money for those commissions, which has been a way traditionally that artists have made an income. Um, uh, Carolyn said, I, "I worry if I put enough paint on the waterproofing, you set a thin layer." Uh, well, I mean a thin layer for the blocking part of the painting process, Carleen. Um, so step two, step one and step two of the more method of painting, we should thin the paint down. Um, and I use a bit of water to do that. So uh, I'm not sure what you mean by the waterproofing, um, unless you meant the blocking. Um, so yeah, keep the paint. I mean, it's a, it's a good rule of thumb with oil painting is that you start out with thinner paint and you work towards thicker paint because if you you start with thick paint it's very difficult to put more paint over the top of it right <laughs> which you'll find out um, so start with thin down paint and work towards thicker paint uh, patty says can we block in any of the demos with acrylics and then switch absolutely patty in fact we were talking about that on one of our advanced live streams recently so yeah that's definitely a good approach um, Terry said, will you be having regular chats on ABA? Uh, plan is to, to do one or two Q&A sessions a month um, when we get up and running. Um, so yes, we'll, we'll definitely be doing that. Um, so it'd be similar format to what we're doing here now. And um, I'll also use take the opportunity to, to expand on you know, different ideas and concepts. So yeah, but you know, it's gonna, it's gonna take time to build it out. Um, so you know, there's a lot of things we've got planned for it and coming, but um, you know, it's going, to, it's going to take time, which is why uh, the opportunity to join now is the most cost effective. Caroline said, I mean, when you prepare your boards with the three in one paint, uh, I don't thin that down, no. You mean like when we're preparing our MDF boards before we actually start painting on them? Um, the under the sealant, I don't thin that down at all, no. I just straight out of the can. Um, and then, you know, two thick coats of gesso over the top of it. Um, but there's no thinning of that down at all, Carleen. Morning, Jenny in Gold Coast. Welcome. Uh, Rosalie said, I had a go at the mist painting from Wednesday in acrylics. It was a challenge. I tried putting it on the member site, but a photo wouldn't upload. Uh, if you're having trouble uploading your photos, Rosalie, then... Um, watch the training video on our support page on how to upload photos. Um, shouldn't be a problem. Um, but yeah, as we talked about earlier, Gary made the same comment. Difficult painting to do in uh, acrylics. It can be done. It just you need to use lots of paint and you need to probably use a retarder uh, in there. Tracy said, how much are the large tubes of Windsor and Newton WSO? I could only get the small ones. Um, I went to the... Uh, Eckersley's yesterday and I bought five tubes of large artisan paint and uh, they were $60 each which I thought was too damn expensive um, 
but that's how much there were. Actually, while, while we wait for more questions to be put on, I'm just going to check on Jackson's. I'm pretty sure I'll get them some cheaper on Jackson's. But I needed them urgently and I couldn't wait. Um. <coughs> oils, oils, oils. Water mix ball oil paint. Windsor and Newton. Do, 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 do. Where are we? View the full range. Size 200 mil. French ultramarine. Holy cow. <laughs> I paid $60 yesterday at Eckersley's in an art shop. But Jackson's Art uh, have got them for twenty-seven dollars twenty-six, half price, right? Um, because I was impatient, I needed them straight away. Um, yeah, but I've got to add to that postage because there's a cost for postage. So there you go. They're going to range somewhere between twenty-seven dollars online plus postage, and sixty dollars retail for whoever asked that question. Ch uh, Tracy. Uh, so Tracy, you're in Australia, so go to um, go to jacksonart.com, make sure you're on the Australia version of it, and um, you'll be able to get them half the price I got them, but you'll have to pay postage. Alright friends, any other questions? Do you put a put a thick a thick coat of that on? I don't thin it down, but I want to know if I if you put a thick coat. Uh, I don't know if it's thick or thin, Carlene. I just get the paintbrush, slop it in, and just wave it over. Um, it's probably medium. I, I really don't know. Uh, I don't think too much about it, um, and I would suggest not thinking too much about it. It's like just get the paint, slop it on both sides, let it dry. Um, the gesso is more important um, that you. Yeah, I'll put a reasonably thick coat of gesso on. Um, but yeah, um, I, I, I don't know whether it's thick or thin. It's just however it comes comes out. Jenny said, that's huge, great tax deduction. <laughs> Problem with tax deductions, Jenny, is you have to earn it before you can deduct it. <laughs> before you can spend it and deduct it. So yeah, um, had quite a few, a few of those this year. She says, I put on two coats of primer front and back, not thinned, and then the coat of gesso on the front. Uh, Shares, I would suggest doing it the other way around. One coat of the uh, primer um, and two coats of gesso. Uh, Gail said, Rod, I should not laugh, but you look so disappointed in paying extra for your paints. Well, I, I was a bit disappointed. I was disappointed in myself for not planning ahead and being organised enough and, <laughs> yeah. Sonia said, any news about the October workshop? Not yet, Sonia, I'll... Um, I'll I'll get to that in the next week or two. Um, Gail said, thank you, Rod. I enjoy your live streams so much. I hate missing them. Thanks, Gail. Appreciate that. I'm glad you enjoy them. <coughs> Linda said, at the risk of sounding silly regarding selling a painting, haven't been on the support page to read the copyright info. You mentioned you were selling the Misty Fog painting, so I shouldn't be selling my version. Uh, no, no. The Misty Fog painting we're doing as part of the Learn to Paint Academy. So um, anything that's been done as part of the Learn to Paint Academy, you can paint that and sell it. So that, that's perfectly fine. The ones you can't sell is if you see something on rodmore.art or on my Rodmore Art Facebook page that isn't part of the Learn to Paint Academy. You can't copy my paintings and sell those, right? Unless I've already done it as part of Learn to Paint Academy. Um, Teresa said, I did mine in acrylics as well, and it was just drying far too fast, so my next attempt will be with a gel medium to slow down the drying. Yeah, you need a retarder, uh, and also probably more paint would help, right? You need, you need more paint. I think that's a good rule of thumb for uh, most of us, is to use more paint. Okay, where are we up to? Uh, 
Uh, Margaret, I would like to join the ABA, but I've lost your link with the email. Margaret, contact our support desk, um, learntopaint.academy forward slash support. Just raise a support ticket there and they'll give you the link for that. Marie said, how do you get rocks beside water look real? Mine look like I dropped the brush. Well, Murray, if you look at that link I gave earlier with the page of my paintings, um, you'll see that most of my rocks are done with palette knife work. Um, so, um, yeah, that's, that's how I do it. Uh, that's a big question. So the question really is not about how do you get rocks to look real. It's about how do you paint any object to have a degree of realism, um, which comes down to shape, comes down to values, comes down to colour, comes down to edges. Like with rocks in particular, edges are important. They need to have hard edges to give them that solidness feel. Um, and it comes down to brushwork, right? So there's no rock painting technique. There's only the fundamentals which go together to make up the elements in a painting, right? Um, so um, that's what I'd suggest. But the way I approach rocks is I use palette knife to get that sort of hit and miss effect, which I like, but it may not be everyone's. Jenny said, if you have an ABM, you can still claim any income earned is put against your costs. Uh, yeah, no, I'm fully aware of that, Jenny. I'm not sure if you're directing that at me, but um, I have actually have a company with a, an ABA, uh, ABN number and, um, and, and accountants and advisors. So, um, but thank you, yes. <laughs> um, Catherine said in Michigan, Catherine in Michigan, Carlene, there's actually a video Rod has somewhere that he's actually doing the board prep. Yep, if you go to learntopaint.academy and look under articles, there's a video of me that doing it there. Although I don't know that in the video I was using the sealer. It's something I may have added afterwards. But thanks for that, Catherine. Magdalene said, thanks, Rod, for today's Q&A. My pleasure, Magdalene. Thank you for tuning in. Um, Debbie said, it's fun painting while you chat away. Yes, I imagine it would be. Callum was thinking about traveling to Queensland. Uh, yeah, stay put, I think, if you're in Sydney. Sonia said, your suggestion of locking in time every day for painting or for art works so well. Thank you, as I'd not thought of doing that. Yeah, I mean, uh, if you're going to cross that magical line from amateur artist to professional, semi-professional, you need to start thinking about how you use time, right? So allocating time for painting, alloc allocating time each week for photog photographing and, and so on, and listing your paintings is all really important part of it. So yeah, I'm glad that helps, Sonia. Um, I'll be some of the videos we'll be doing for ABA will be you know um, around productivity, time management, things like that because they're, they're important. Shelley said, "Thank you for that chat. We'll look forward to receiving my painting. Good on you, Shelley. We'll get it wrapped up this weekend for you." Colin said, "Thanks so much, Rod. Very informative. My takeaway: use the more, use more paint and follow the more method. <laughs> Good on you, Colin. Appreciate that." Barbara says, Rod, I'm not sure when I finish my painting and how much finessing I need to do. I like what I've done, but but can look quite impressionistic, so always not sure should I leave or not. Well, I, Barbara, I think it comes down to what result you're looking to get. You know, what, what sort of finish are you looking for? Um, I like I like loose, interpretive paintings that convey a sense of energy and emotion and feeling as opposed to realism paintings, which have hyper details, right? Um, so I think a painting's finished when it, a, a painting's never finished, let's be honest. There's always something more to do, right? Um, but to me, a painting is ready to be concluded when it has the right feel to it. That's, that's my criteria that I judge by. Um, Others will, who are more focused on detail when they've got enough blades of grass and stones and things in there. Um, so it really comes down to what you're looking for as a, as a result. But here's the one thing I definitely think is true for everyone, is that the more work you do on a painting, the more you work it to death. <laughs> there comes a point where it's so easy to cross that point. And that point is where the painting has a nice, fresh feel to it. And then we keep working it, and we keep working it, and we keep working it, and we lose that freshness about it. 
um, very easy to do. And I, and I think this is one of the, I'm gonna write a little book, a little ebook um, soon on the biggest mistakes I've seen beginner artists make and how to avoid them. And this will be one of them, is overworking a painting, working it to death, right? And, and usually the problem is that the painting's just not working. And so we think that if we do more to it, that it will fix it, right? And usually we, we gravitate towards trying to detail paintings up. The reason why painting's not working though, is really you have to go all the way back to the start. And the biggest reason is composition and design. The, the next biggest reason is values, then color. And so um, if you're trying to continue to work a painting because it's just not quite looking right, then probably the issue is right at the very start. You haven't got the shapes right, you haven't got them in the right place, right size. And so no amount of things you do at the end is gonna fix that, right? Um, so I think really it comes down to, for me, when a painting feels right, that's when I stop. Um, and it, yeah, Yvonne says less is more, and I, I do think that's very true. Um, yeah, it's very easy to overwork a painting. So I think abandoning a painting earlier rather than later is probably worth exploring as an option, Barbara. <laughs> Teresa said, I definitely need to use more paint. Thanks for the tip. And thanks so much for another great informative chat. Yeah, Teresa, into that ebook, biggest mistakes I've seen beginners make, I'd say right up the top is going to be, you know, especially with acrylic artists, is just not using anywhere near enough paint. I can't tell you how many times I've done workshops here or other places where we're doing a 16 by 20, and um, I say to people, you know, squeeze out a lot of paint, um, and they squeeze out this much blue, you know, and they've got this big canvas. The whole idea of painting is in acrylics and oils, not so much gouache and definitely not watercolour, but in acrylics and oils, the beauty of painting is being able to move the paint around a surface, right? It's part of the reason why I love palette knives and other mark making tools is to be able to push paint around. But if you're not using enough paint, you're using small amounts of paint, it, it absorbs into the uh, painting surface and then there's no, um, no movement. And with no movement, we can't finesse things. No worries, Barbara, I'm glad that helped. Uh, here is the link, it's jacksonart.com, but I'll pop the link in the... Um, in the chat for everyone. Uh, what's an ebook? An ebook is a book that's delivered in digital format, like a PDF document rather than a physical format. Here's the link everyone for that uh, Jackson Art. Now that's the Australian price, so if you're not in Australia, then you know may not be relevant to you. Um, <coughs> Sue said, need a copy of your upcoming book. Once you've decided your painting is not working, can you use the same surface and paint over it to start again? Yes, you can, Sue. Um, lots of great artists in history have done that. Um, maybe a coat of gesso is probably not a bad idea, but yeah, you can definitely do that. Sand it back if you've got you know thicker paint. Mary said, that's me, Rod, a stingy painter. You've got to paint like you're a millionaire if you ever want to get good results. It's very difficult to paint stingy and end up with good results, unfortunately, right? And this is part of the reason with the more method of painting, I, was, I said, okay, we don't need 35 colours, Let's get a few colors and learn how to mix them, right? But we'll use a lot of that paint and get the best quality you can. Because at the end of the day, when somebody has a painting, you think a hundred years time, right? There's a painting hanging up in, in a gallery somewhere or in somebody's home. Um, what are the two things that are gonna be there? Or three things, one of them's kind of intangible. But the two physical qualities of our painting is going to be the surface we paint on and the paint that we use. So they're the things we have to make sure we, nobody's gonna know what brushes are used, right? So you could use a twig or a branch from out in the garden to paint it. Um, but the paint and the surface are the, are the things that are gonna live on beyond us. And, um, and they're the things we need to invest the most in, right? The other, in, Quality, of course, is going to be the intangible quality of the artist's soul in a painting, but that's a bigger discussion for another time. Um, where are we up to? She says, I find it very frustrating trying to allot time to painting when doing shift work. I try to do my best, but end up 
behind, I think. Well, yeah, I mean, that's going to happen, Shiz. Um, trying to manage your time is not easy, yeah? Um, yeah, I'm not sure I have an answer for that for you, apart from <coughs> trying to move away from shift work. Meryl says, yes, I've overworked many paintings. Yeah, I think we all have, Meryl. I think it's just part of the journey. <laughs> Peter says, when you have the basics right, a painting often just comes together. So true, Peter. And then there's no need for lots of um, details and stuff at the end and, and working it to death. It just pops together and then you go, okay, that one's, that one's finished. Thanks, Shirz. Uh, Patty said, thank you for all the great information. My pleasure, Patty. Sonia said, thank you for another wonderful Q&A. Learned so much from these sessions. Have a great weekend. Thank you, Sonia. Thanks, Sajada. You have a great weekend too. Catherine said, I love that concept, paint like a millionaire. I can't claim that one. I heard somebody say it many years ago, and I might have been Kevin McPherson. I, I can't remember who. Um, twig painting like finger brushes, yes. Although I'm not recommending finger painting with oil paints. Okay, don't ever get, even though I do it, don't ever take that as a recommendation from me. Wear gloves, even though I don't. Um, twigs with leaves, believe it or not, Catherine, there's one or two abstract artists around who. That's what they use, and uh, and they make their own brushes from twigs and things. Gail says you'll be painting like a millionaire with that sixty dollars paint. <laughs> Very true, Gail. <laughs> Thanks, Carleen. All right, we're going to wrap it up there, folks. Um, Jeanette said something that I found with the inventory in ABA is I found at least fifteen canvases that I can gesso over to use again. I thought I was out of canvases. Well, here you go. <laughs> Amazing what can happen when you organize things. That's terrific, Jeanette. You'll be uh, good to go for a while. All right, friends, it's been a pleasure. Um, hope you all have a great day. Here's, uh, for those who are in the members area, here's some harps for you. And here's some confetti. <laughs> Can't do that on Facebook, unfortunately, but um, a new new toy for me to play with i'll be bored with it by next week all right friends we're going to wrap it up um i'll see you next wednesday for our live painting session we're going to finish this one off and then i can just ship it off to sonia in the us thank you sonia for buying the painting and uh next thursday we're going to do an advanced live stream um oh big news as well don't go just yet um advanced live painting stream next thursday and uh, I'm thinking that we're going to maybe tackle some old master paintings and do a recreation of those. Um, Friday, our coffee chat. But the big news is I'm now going into planning mode for Unleash the Artist challenge number two. So stay tuned for that. It's looking like it's going to fall mid to late July. And um, we're going to do something a little bit different instead of landscapes and seascapes. I'm going to do maybe a floral, maybe a still life and maybe something else. Who knows, alrighty? So um, look out for information on that. And 